Hey you awesome people welcome back to my channel and in this video I'll show you how to make 3D hair and also drag it onto your head with movement. So without wasting any more time let's get into the video. So first of all you have to shoot your video. If you have tracking markers on your face that's really good. But Blender can also track your face features as well. But I'll advise you to place a few markers on your face. You will also have to clean up the markers later. And for the background, if you are shooting on a tripod, then you don't have to track the camera. But if you are not shooting on a tripod, then make sure the wall is not so plain. Just like I placed a few black dots here. So we can track the camera first. After that, take two screenshots from your video. Just like this. So we can create the head with this. So now hop onto Blender and create a new project file. Delete the default cube, shift A, mesh, face builder head. And now we can go to the face builder menu, add images, and add your two images. Or you can do three, but two should be fine. Now click on the first one and click on align face. Normally it will do a good job, but you'll have to tweak it a little bit. So drag these little pins like, like this. You can go as close as you want. We don't need the neck, so we just gonna remove that. If you make a mistake, you can just Press Ctrl C on your keyboard, or you can right click on the rod to remove it. After you're done with the front view, you can go to the side view now. Align face, and it should do a pretty good job, but if it didn't, you can just fix it manually. Thing look good. <laughs> Everything looks good. Ugh. Go to the Textures tab and create te texture. After you're done with this, Ctrl S to save this. Mm, head, hair, face, me. Okay. Now go to File, New, VFX, and open up your footage. So the first thing, set scene, frames, and preface it. I'm just gonna fi finish my video right here so 176 frames should be enough for me but you can go as long as you want after that go to the render properties and go to color management and change this to standard if you don't the colors are gonna be weird I don't know why blender does that but it does so we have to do it manually right here so now let's start with the track First, we're gonna drag the camera movement. If you have a tripod shot, you can skip this step. So, I'll just change this to FN. I don't know why, but yeah. Change this to previous, previous stream, and click on normal light. If there's any changes in the light, exposure, or anything, the track can mess up. But if you press, but if you normalize it, uh, it should fix the issue. Let's just make this a little bit bigger. Size search also. And now hold control and left click to add a marker. Hold E on your keyboard. This is gonna show up. And drag left. Go to the frame again and drag right. Let's just do all of them. You can go one by one. Because if you do all of them at once it can sometimes mess up and trying to fix all of them at once it's a bit tedious uh, this one's dancing around I'm just gonna delete this one you only need eight good trackers for a good salt so this should be enough I'm gonna click on tripod because my shot doesn't move too much. If there's perspective shift and stuff like that, 
you're gonna have to set the free keyframes and all that. We'll talk about it when we're tracking the head. So, and I don't know my focal length, so I'm just gonna click this as well. And now, solve camera motion. 0.38, that's very good. We're done with the camera track. Set it as background. Now go to the track tab, uh, click on objects, create a new object, name it my head for hair. You just, just can just, you can just name it head. Now we are gonna drag the head. This should be fun. Hold E, drag left side. Hold E, drag to the right. Hey, look at that, it's working fine. Very nice, very nice, very nice. As you can see, I lift my eyebrows and these dots move. And I don't want that because it can mess up the track. Because they're not moving with my head, they're, they're also moving with the eyebrows as well. So I'm not gonna track these points. Be sure to keep that in mind. I'm gonna try to uh, track a point here, but let's see if it works out or not. Ah, first problem. It's working fine until here. So I can just click S, resize it a little and go back. Oh, did the same thing. Now it's working fine. Okay. If your drag here is going fine and then it messes at some point and just stop breaking. I don't know why Blender does that, but that's because when you put the marker here, it's looking for this pattern. And the pattern changes a little bit, so I, d I think it uh, it stops track. I'm not sure. Let's just drag it forward. Uh, what you can do is just go to the last good frame we have, click on this, so it can clear the area in front. Go one frame forward, put it manually there and start tracking again. If one of the trackers doesn't work, uh, you have to manually fix it. Basically, you have to babysit it. All the way. Finally. Go to the soft tab. And now we have to uncheck the tripod and look for the keyframes where there's a lot of perspective change so frame 61 and 88 there yeah. yeah one pixel error I guess that's okay go to the track camera and set up tracking scene delete everything and place the camera where it makes some sense so I'm just gonna reset all of these and these and then I'm gonna rotate it 90 degrees on the X so R X and type 90 on your keyboard and then I'm gonna move it up a little bit so it matches my real life scene a little bit better. This is the background, this is my face. We have the trackers. Go to file. Append. And go to the project file where you just created your head. Unticked. FP head. Append. So now what we can do is match this to our footage so the easiest bit you can do that is click on your head go to edit mode and click on the area 
where you have a trackpad the news should be fine now shift s cursor to select it go back to object mode right click set origin origin to 3d cursor and now we can rotate it by the nose go to the camera view click on the nose tracker shift s on your keyboard cursor to select it click on your head again shift s selection to cursor now the nose should be matching hold z on your keyboard and go to wireframe view so we can match this a little bit better r x to rotate now match it with the head in the footage ah i forgot go to the frame where you took the screenshot from for me it was like 53 54 something and now you can match it after you match it with the head click here general layout click on the viewport overlays and turn on motion tracking click on your head go to constraints add a object solver click the object that you tracked for me that was my head and click the camera as camera and you'll notice that the head is gone like right here set inverse and there you are now your head should be moving pretty nicely for the most part let's turn off the motion track again it's time to create the hair now click on your head control a and apply all transforms if you don't do that if you mess with the hair uh, if you mess with the scale and stuff like that the hair simulation will not work properly so now let's add the hair so now we have to tell blender where the hair is going to come out from to do that we are going to create a vertex group so material preview so we can see our hairline see on your keyboard scroll up and down to make it big or smaller you can draw with the left click and erase it with the middle mouse button go to the object data properties create a new vertex group name it hair and click on assign go back to object mode from right here and now we're gonna add the hair go to the particle properties create a new particle system and change it to hair and whoa, whoa, what is happening and that is where our vertex group come in change all of these to your hair Bloop. go to your hair length and set it accordingly let's create a new material for your hair let's make it a black color for right now go to your hair particle system render and change the material to the one you created right now now we can come to children interpolate it there's a few settings uh, if you want a uh, realistic hair so change this to 4 also in the viewport display this is how much it's gonna display in your viewport and this is how much it's gonna be in the final render so make sure you if you're gonna render in EV, make sure to go to your render properties and change this to strip now for the screen shape just turn it up a little bit it's gonna make the end a little bit pointier so something like this should be fine also change the diameter to something like
0.43 nights too much. 0.15 should be fine, I think. This depends on you. How thick the hair you want, how pointy is going to be the end, and stuff like that. Now it's the fun part. Go to the particle edit setting. Go to options. Turn on children. Actually, we need the upper neck, so so make sure you don't turn off the upper neck because the hair is going to be colliding with the head right here and so we don't have a lower neck so it's just gonna dangle right there this is not gonna be a hair styling tutorial so I'm gonna skip that part and I'm not gonna do a lot of hair styling in here as well I'm just gonna make a basic shape but if you want a hair tutorial on a specific hairstyle be sure to leave a comment down below and I'll be happy to make a tutorial in the children settings and reference turn up the random a little bit to make it a little less fiji's after you're done making the hair it's time to turn on the hair dynamics click on your head go to physical physics properties and turn on collision go back to the particle settings and turn on hair dynamics for the quality steps 15 should be enough the higher the number it is the better and realistic the animation will be for the pin goal settings if you want to keep the original shape even if the head is moving a lot you have to turn this up if it's zero the original shape you created will just fall down so 400 should be enough in the collision tip turn this to 5 and turn this to 0 ah uh, yes I guess that's that, that's it now go to the cache and set your keyframes right and click on baked before rendering in cycles make sure to render this in EV and check out the animation because if you the animation is wrong and you render it in cycles all your time is wasted it's still a little glitchy, but I guess that's okay because it's just for tutorial purposes. And to me, I've never figured it out, like, what makes the hair movement good or bad in the settings. I just play with the settings and until I get something good, I don't stop. Also, before rendering, if you don't want the background to be rendered with it, go to the compositing tab and remove everything just stick the render layers into the composite and now you should be good to go for rendering this in cycle you have to do a few steps now so you don't want the head with it right go to your render properties go to film and then tick transparent so you can export it as a png click on your head and shift d to duplicate it and then right click to leave it as it is now delete the particle system on your duplicated head go to your object properties and click on hold out after that go to your first head and go to the particle settings and uncheck show emitter from the viewport and also from the render as well and that's it for this step and now it's time to render this we are going to render this as a PNG sequence. First of all, change the FPS. My footage was 25 FPS, so we'll change it to that. And now we're going to uh, and then now we are going to render this as a PNG sequence. Go to the output setting and click on PNG. Create a folder for your hair, and also name it if you want, and then accept. And now change this RGB to RGBA. It's uh, a mistake I've made a few times and I've regretted it. So now click on render animation and you're almost there. After the render is finished, we're gonna need the shadow catcher. If you want, you can just do it in the original render. Uncheck holdout and check the shadow catcher in the object properties. But I like to do it separately because I can adjust it accordingly in After Effects afterwards. So when you turn the shadow catcher on, 
go to the original head with the particle system and under the rear visibility uncheck camera and now you'll only have the shadow and make sure to render this in a different folder after you're done with the rendering it's time to go back to after effects and load in your footage and import your hair and the shadow past for the first step make sure that the frame rate matches if it doesn't right click interpret footage and main and type your frame rate here and then press enter after that we're gonna click and drag the hair shadow right here go to the final frame and this is my final frame so press N on your keyboard to trim the comp layer right click here and trim comp to work area and now click and drag the hair on top of that so as you can see my hair has a lot of red in this footage so we're gonna do this for this hair as well so go to effects where is it color correction and color balance increase the shadows the red and decrease the blues a little bit so it roughly matches with the hair and it won't look so out of place one other thing is that the blur of my footage and the blur of the hair are not matching as you can see the hair is a lot sharper so we're gonna go to effect blur and sharpen camera lens blur and decrease this so it matches with the footage now as you can see the shadow is not matching with our face so we're gonna manually fix that let's go to effect distort liquify and turn on the keyframes for this effect make sure to turn on the keyframes where the shadow is matching a lot better with the first frame you can hold control and left click drag to make it smaller and bigger Oh, sorry we put it on the wrong layer Control C Control V and delete it from the hair layer And now match the shadow with your face shape Press U on your keyboard to see the keyframes go to effect color correction curves let's turn this down a little bit it's the same for the shadow as well a little bit tweaks in the reds and the blues as well and yeah and now to fix the hair behind this, we can just use liquify for that as well. So turn on the keyframes for this as well. Go up and down on the timeline and add keyframes and fix your hair. So it doesn't show behind it. So that's it for this video and this is the final result. It's not very good, but as this was for tutorial purposes, and not a professional or maybe even the videos I edit so yeah that's why I didn't m spend much time on the tweaking and stuff like that it can be a lot better like the hair movement and the shadow and stuff like that it can be composited even better and that up and that's up to you how much time you spend on it the better it's gonna get so thank you so much for watching if you like this video and it helped you out a little bit 
make sure to like and subscribe and comment down below let me know it it makes me a lot happier and if you want any other tutorials uh be sure to leave a comment down below as well and i'll be happy to check that out i'm gonna be doing more tutorials on how i edit my videos and doing a environment in blender and stuff like that so stay tuned for that catch you in the next video